the World War II. In this year, so young people were very, uh, very young uh, population, a major majority in Japan. And uh, 10 years later, 20 years later, 75 later, because this uh, big uh, young people uh, gets uh, age or get older, and uh, this part will increase here and here and here, here. But this is a maximum size of populations. So now it's this is uh, largest part is changing like this. And now this uh, area is just here. So therefore 2010, now it's almost 60. And uh, as you just you focus on a uh, very young part in uh, 2010, this is very, very small. This means the birth rate uh, decreases and con this situation continue. Okay, the next slide shows the future estimation. And uh, this is 2018, uh, so the 2025, 2035. Okay, and uh, this is ages 65. This is a fast boom. And this is a second boom. And the second boom, it also gets older. In 2035, the second boomers, uh, now 65, and the first boomers, almost 90. But no third boom for uh, birth rate. And the birth rate uh, continues to decrease. Very, very small size of children. Now here, and so therefore, um, aging society is coming more in 2035. Okay, so, but this, uh, okay, now, from now, we focus on the Japanese fiscal condition, but this situation has crucial role to uh, consider the Japanese fiscal system because so many people are located in here, in the elderly, and these people not working here. Of course, working area is here. So therefore, after 65, uh, this uh, elderly people are not working fast. And also, this uh, elderly people has a bad health condition. So therefore, uh, go to the hospital and uh, this means uh, the social security cost uh, will increase okay in this right i will explain the japanese economic growth history first 1956 the 10 years after world war ii Japan uh, faces the high economic growth, around 9.1%. Uh, this is the average. This means the average. 1956 to 1973, uh, average growth rate is 9%. Very, very high economic growth uh, were achieved in uh, this 15 years. But after uh, 1972, the economic growth is a little bit uh, lower. So this is a high economic growth. So therefore, this is a developing country now. But this is a almost developed country. And 1990, this is a bubble period finished. The bubble collapsed. 1990 and after 1990 
economic growth rate becomes lower. And uh, after 1990, economic growth is around 1%. So it's so very, very low. So well, this is already developed country or, or a matured country. Now, as you know, this is a nine, uh, seven, uh, 27 to 007. This is a Lima shock. After Lima shock, uh, the world or Japan also uh, get uh, some uh, recovered. But after that, uh, still low economic growth. Okay, this is a very interesting uh, figure. So can you imagine? So what's, so this shows what? That is shown in this video. This is a uh, crocodile. <laughs> Sometimes uh, the Japanese government uh, called this figure is a uh, mouse of crocodile. It's almost the same shape. But, okay, I will show, I will explain the red carp and the blue carp. This is red carp shows the total expenditure and the blue carp shows tax revenue. So as you can imagine easily, if there exists uh, the difference between the total expenditure and the tax revenue, if total expenditure is uh, larger than the tax revenue, then the government has uh, no money, so has not enough money. So then the difference uh, between red point and blue point, this difference should be covered by the debt, by issuing the government bond. And uh, this uh, graph lower, it means the size of government bond debt. So therefore, for all years from 75 to the present, so every year, the Japanese government issued a new government bond. But uh, before the bubble period collapse, then this uh, red sun, red curve and blue curve moves or in the same way. So this difference is a little bit relatively smaller. So the government bond issued every year, it's not so high. But after bubble period, so economy uh, is not, uh, economy cannot get a high growth rate. So then tax revenue decreases. On the other hand, so economy is bad situation. So therefore the, uh, the government has a pressure to uh, increase total expenditure to recover the economy. So the tax revenue decreases. On the other hand, the total expenditure of the government increases. As a result, the difference expanded. And uh, now, uh, but uh, around uh, 25 or uh, 07, around here, this is a little bit economic boom. So before Lehman shock, so economy in the US or economy in the European countries, economy in Asia, so all world economy uh, is a good situation. So therefore just difference is uh, getting a little bit smaller. But after Lima shock here, global financial crisis, it's called a Lima shock, then uh, this difference uh, expands again because total expenditure increases and the total revenue decreases. Okay. This, this uh, expansion, this expansion 
or ho depends on the economic situation. But as you know, total expenditure has a trend to positive shape, a uh, positive slope. So trend of a uh, positive curve, positive slope curve. This is because of uh, the aging society. This is because so social security cost increases. And after Lehman shock, so tax revenue is increasing. This is uh, because of the Japanese economy is recovered. And also, uh, yeah. And uh, expenditure is not so increasing. So therefore now the Japanese government, uh, no, Japanese uh, fiscal situation is, I think is getting to the good direction. But uh, this year, COVID-19 happened and uh, Japanese government have to expand uh, for COVID-19. Situation changes dramatically like this. <laughs> and uh, this expenditure size is uh, a point to achieve a point a high a very extreme point the difference this point uh because of uh covid 90 policy and uh, revenue is still uh stable but uh of course so next year tax revenue will dramatically decreases because uh economy is uh, affected by the COVID-19. Okay. On the other hand, uh, focusing on the accumulated government bonds outstanding. So as I said, the difference uh, between a red curve and the blue curve, this is a government bond issue flow, the new, uh, the size of new government bond. So therefore accumulated this space is accumulated size of Japanese government. This is outstanding of Japanese government, uh, government bond. And uh, in this slide, I will tell you two, two types of uh, government bonds here. So first of all, so first is a construction bonds. Construction bonds is issued for constructing the public uh, infrastructure like a uh, road, bridge, or ports, or some know, buildings, public buildings. So, so we can see in front of me, we can see that this is a public works. But uh, red uh, bonds is a special deficit financing bond. This is a uh, uh, this is issued for financing the deficit. So therefore, if social uh, security cost is high, then there is no money, so therefore issue the bonds. So after issuing the bonds, there is uh, nothing in front of me, just, just to cover the deficit. So therefore, if we issue the construction bonds, this is a public infrastructure. And this public infrastructure will create the benefits now and the benefits in the future, okay? And the repayment for new issue of construction bonds is covered by increasing tax in the future. So therefore future generation or the people in the future will repay uh, to the government, uh, repay or tax to finance repayment of government bonds. So therefore it's okay because blue area, this is a construction bonds. So benefits in the future and the tax payment or tax or payment uh, or the future generation by future generation. So therefore this is a matching, okay? So therefore this is justified. So construction bonds uh, in some sense are justified in terms of the benefit and the cost in the same period in the future. On the other hand, 
the special bonds, this is issued for financing the deficit now. Deficit is created in now, in the present, to cover the social security costs. So therefore, benefits happen now. Oh, OK. OK, <laughs> sorry. And uh, let's, this is a special bond is issued for financing the deficit. And the deficit is uh, created from the social security service, social security cost. So therefore, this benefit from the this special deficit financing bonds, the benefits from special bonds are uh, created now in the present, but the tax payment or repayment in the future. And the repayment cost is covered by increasing tax in the future. And the future generation will uh, pay the tax for repayment. But uh, benefits in, in now. So therefore benefits is the present and the cost in the future. So therefore benefit and the cost is a different period. So therefore, this is a generation gap, okay? Generation um, difference. So therefore, we sometimes uh, say, so blue bond is justified in some sense, but the red bond has a big problem. But unfortunately, uh, red bond increases and the blue bond is, oh, it's the same size, but the red bond is increasing now. This is Japanese fiscal situation. Okay. And uh, this is accumulated. Oh, okay, sorry. This is the same. This uh, maybe. So oh. after COVID-19 and uh, this deficit is very high. Okay. This is a long-term debt outstanding of central and local governments. And uh, this is a percentage of GDP. And uh, in the 1990, just in the bubble uh, period, percentage of GDP, percentage of government general bonds in the central government of GDP is only 37%, including local governments. Uh, this is a percentage of GDP, just 15%. But now, less than 60 percent but in the 10 years later it's uh, more than 100 or for the central government is uh, 60 percent but in 90 uh, 2010 uh, it's more than 100 and uh, 2015 more than 150 and now it's uh, 2090, it's all, almost 160% uh, of GDP. And including the local governments, uh, more, uh, just uh, 25, uh, 200%. And uh, as I just see, sorry, this is, but I, I will explain later. So almost other countries in the world, this percentage is less than 100. So therefore Japan's percentage is extremely high. Now this figure shows the trends in interest payments and the interest rate. Okay, this is a government bond outstanding. So as I explained, this outstanding is increasing continuously. And uh, after COVID-19, maybe this uh, size is more uh, located in a more high area. And, uh, but, so, okay. Usually, so if government bond outstanding increases, then interest payments also increases. Because, so usually, uh, so in interest rate times government bond outstanding is equal to the interest payments. But we focus on the interest payments. Uh, after bubble period right here, interest payments is just uh, not increasing. And uh, on the, 
the reason why uh, interest payments is not increasing, even government bond outstanding is increasing. This is uh, because interest rate is decreasing every year. So before the bubble period, or before the bubble period, interest rate is very, very high. Okay. But after bubble period, in interest rate is around 1.3 or 4 or 5. And recently 1918, uh, less than one point. So therefore, if uh, even if government bond outstanding is increasing, the interest payment is not increasing. So this is good for Japanese government. So Japanese government bond outstanding increasing increases, but interest payment is not increasing. So this is mm, good situation for Japan, but uh as i mentioned later this situation uh, faces higher risk because if interest rate increasing then interest payments of course dramatically increases so then so japanese government faces big problem because the japanese government has no money Let's move to the more details about the Japanese uh, expenditure and uh, Japanese revenue. Uh, Japan le uh, expenditure in Japan and expen uh, revenue in Japan. Okay. Uh, left hand side, so general account total expenditure. Okay, please uh, check the percentage. Okay, now. 33, almost 30 percent is for social security. And uh, this is a local allocation tax grant. This is a grant from central government to local government. Now, uh, 60 percent of total Japan expenditure, uh, sorry, 60 percent of total revenue is allocated, uh, is collected by the central government. And 40 percent is collected by the local government. On the other hand, in the expenditure size, 60% of uh, expenditure uh, done in uh, local government area. So therefore, there is some difference, okay? 60% of revenue in the central government, but the 60% of expenditure in the local level. So therefore, maybe 20% difference. The 20% uh, difference is allocated from central government to local government by the transfer. And this is a uh, local allocation transfer grants. And this is 50%. And the public works is uh, to construct the public infrastructure. This is uh, education, mainly the national university or the primary school. And uh, so uh, primary school and junior school. The high school is uh, operated by the local government. Uh, so therefore local, uh, so high, okay. high school, uh, the cost for high school is allocated from the local allocation grants. And uh, primary school and uh, junior high school, this operation costs, from the uh, education uh, subsidy. This is a national defense. This as a expenditure. And uh, please note that uh, 50, more, around 20%, 20% of total expenditure for national debt service, which means that 20% uh, of expenditure is uh, allocate to repay for the government bonds. Okay, let's move to the revenue size. In Japan, uh, 
uh, there exists uh, three main uh, tax, which are income tax, corporation tax, and the consumption tax. So income tax to levy the labor and working, and the corporation tax to the corporation and the farm, the profit of corporation and farm. And the consumption is to levy the tax for the just the consumption. And uh, the revenue, but uh, so you note, you should note uh, around uh, 30%, 30% is uh, depends on the government bond issues because the revenue is only 70%. Okay, total expenditure, this is 100%. And to cover total expenditure, the tax revenue is very small and the 30% is covered by issuing the new government bond. Okay, this figure shows a comparison between uh, bubble period, which is a high economic growth uh, situation and uh, fiscal year 2090 budget. So interestingly, tax revenue is almost the same, a little bit higher in the 1920s, 19. So almost the same. And also, sorry, public works is almost the same. Now this is a 30 years difference and this is 1990 and this is uh, 2019. And 30 years later, so interestingly, public works level is the same. And the education level, almost the same. And the national defense is almost the same. The local tax allocation, local, this is a grant for the local government, is almost the same. But there are just two main points which are dramatically increasing. First is the social security. Because of aging, the social security is almost so double three times. And the national debt, this is a repayment for the national government bond, this government bond, almost 50% uh, increase. So therefore, this shows, uh, explains, so in 30 years after public period, so two points happened. So first is the aging. And uh, to cover aging cost, so the government repayment cost is also increases. Okay. This is a uh, figure to show the increase in social security benefits. Social security benefits is, yeah, pre, uh, is a social security cost, is equal to social security cost, okay? Benefits, it means just uh, this see, uh, this means uh, the people receives in the hospital, in the doctor, uh, but uh, this is a benefit. But this is equal to the social security cost. Okay. If you go to the hospital, and uh, there, okay, of course, in Japan, there is a total social security system. This is good. And uh, if you are uh, low income, then you don't have to pay very small amounts. And uh, even if if you are middle income, maybe if you uh, you are a member, okay, all Japanese people are member of social security system. And uh, if you go to hospital and uh, you just pay thirty percent or twenty percent of total cost of medical cost. So this is good if you are. In, in uh, if you in uh, bad health conditions, 
but you don't have to pay a lot. So this is a good system. But uh, the residual, I mean, 70% uh, of medical costs are covered by the social security system. And uh, this social security cost is now um, very huge. And after bubble period 1919, uh, uh, so the present. So social insurance contribution, this is not tax, but uh, it's a kind of payment of social security system. So now so in Japan, there is a good social security system, but all people can join, all two people have to join uh, this system. But all people uh, have to pay first social insurance contributions and also uh, contributions. But social cost is here and the contributions is right here. So there is a difference. This difference are covered by the tax. And if tax uh, is not enough, then this difference is covered by government bonds. And the contribution is increasing, but the total cost is more increasing. So as a result, the difference is increasing. So this blue or uh, green area is tax finance or bond finance. And uh, this explains just, uh, Mm, okay, yes. but the Japanese social security system uh, is constructed by the pension and the medical care and the long-term care. Mm. This evolution, oh, this uh, figure simply shows so social security rate expenditure is increasing. Okay. This uh, figure shows uh, details of the medical and long-term care expenditure. Okay. This, uh, okay. Uh, this is a cost for this area shows the cost for the social uh, cost for the medical cost for age 65 to 74 medical care long term care okay and this is a cost for age 75 and over people okay this is a national medical care expenditure per capita if the people are aged 65 to 74, it's just is a 553,000 yen. But if age, this the people is aged and the people is uh, elderly, elderly, now over 75, then this cost is changes 9.910, And the public aid per capita, then 77 to 349. So approximately five times. This situation is the same in a long term care system. Then uh, age less than 74 years old. Then, uh, for example, the cost is 1.4, but cost is approximately 10 times if the people after it's, it's uh, older than 75 years old. Uh, that, this uh, area shows the uh, number of people. Now the number of people is, uh, okay. Now 2016, the people of less than 74 is a uh, 17.7 million. But, uh, and also people oh, after uh, old elder than 75 years is uh, 16.9 million people. But 
2025, 10 years later, the people, the number of people in the less than 74, it's almost the same or some smaller. But uh, 2025, the people after 75 years old, uh, it's increasing more. So please imagine the cost is five times and the cost is a 10 times after 75, but uh, the population of after 75 is increasing. So therefore you can imagine the high, uh, higher cost for social security coming in five years or 10 years. Okay, now this is a fiscal situations comparison internationally. This is a fiscal balance flow, and this is accumulated. So as I mentioned before, so Japan's uh, ratio as percentage of GDP, government gross debt ratio as percentage of GDP, more than 200, right? But other countries, as a developed international uh, countries in the US or in the European, Italy, Italy is a little bit higher, but still 120. And the US, uh, UK, France, Canada is almost uh, 90 or 100 percent. And uh, as you know, so German has a big good economy, and uh, this ratio is decreasing. Decreasing means so revenue. Uh, is covered by tax. Uh, I, I mean, uh, expenditure is higher than the revenue. So therefore, this is a uh, national, no national deficit. So every year, the government bonds are smaller, accumulation outstanding getting smaller. But uh, from this year, so we can know that Japan is extremely high. And Japan is a very unique uh, situations. This is a summarize of the problem induced by public deficit and debt. So we propose uh, four points. First of first is, uh, first problem is decreasing the degree of discretion and freedom for public management. So if public deficit and debt, so as I know, as I mentioned, so in the expenditure side, uh, around about 20% uh, is used for the repayment. And also in the revenue side, around 30% uh, of revenue is covered by issuing the bonds. So therefore, if uh, this problem is uh, increasing, then uh, we face uh, the decrease of the degree of discretion and freedom for public uh, management. And the next second point is uh, expanding intergenerational inequity. So as I mentioned about, uh, uh, as I mentioned, I explained the two types of uh, bonds. So first bonds is a construction bonds. Construction bonds, uh, in the construction bonds, so benefit and uh, cost occurs in the future period, it's the same period. So it's not so problem, but uh, almost recent uh, government bonds uh, uh, is a financing bond, debt financing bonds. So in the debt financing bond, so benefit uh, is created in, the, in now, in the present, but the cost uh, is created in a future period. So therefore, intergenerational uh, equity inequity is expanding. Third uh, problem is harmful effect by the expansion of public funding. So the government expand, uh, expends every year big expenditure, large expenditure by issuing the government bond. So therefore, the size of government, the size of government or size of government expenditure is relatively uh, increasing in the total economy. So therefore public funding is increasing, but this is uh, not good for the economy. 
the next, the last uh, problem is uh, increasing risk for the high financing costs by the increase of the interest rate of the government bonds by credit deteriorations. So as I mentioned, now it's a good situation because interest rate is very low, but uh, the government bond outstanding is very, very high. So therefore, if uh, once uh, the interest rate uh, changes high and getting higher, then so the repayment for the government bond is dramatically high, then this is a big risk for the financing for Japanese government. So now the Japanese government is not a uh, big and uh, not bad situation now, but uh, in the future, it's a big uh, risk. And the Japanese government faces a big risk. Let's see. So th this year, it's the same. And uh, And in the future, I think uh, this uh, problem happened. So fast, so huge central deficit and the risk for interest rate increasing. So now the Japanese government has a huge central, huge deficit and a huge government bond outstanding. So therefore the, the Japanese government faces a risk for future interest rate increase. Now, interest rate is low, but uh, the situation changes. Then, so interest rate uh, will increase because uh, Japanese government faces a big problem, a big deficit. And the second uh, future big problem is additional demands by aging society. Now, so the Japanese birth rate is still low and uh, maybe decreasing more. And uh, there is no solutions to change this situation, the low birth rate now, because so education cost is high and uh, the family has no, uh, fami okay, it is not affordable to have uh, many child many children in the family. So therefore the family will choose the number of children about uh, at two or three maximum. And uh, of course, uh, some people will not ma marriage, get, ma get marriage. And uh, the single people, the share of single people is increasing. And uh, this results in uh, low birth rate. And uh, on the other hand, uh, the, some medical technology is developed. And uh, so some life spans is, uh, life spans expands and the aging society is coming. This means so social security cost is increasing more uh, in 10 years, 20 years. And now, so Japanese government uh, faces a big deficit. So therefore this uh, leads to the reduction of transfer to regional government. So as I said, so central government will transfer to the local government. And if central government faces a big problem, then uh, central government will reduce the level of transfer. But almost municipalities in Japan, 97% depends on the fiscal transfer from the central government. And the huge deficit in the central government negatively affects the amount of the money transferred to regional levels. And this means at the local level, in addition to the central level. So in, at a local level, the revenue or some transfer decreases, and this uh, creates a big uh, problem also. 
Okay, the last question to propose is which direction we should go, or the government should go. This is a very interesting uh, figure. Relationship between social security expenditure and national burden rate in major advanced countries. Okay. Uh, horizontal line is uh, tax and the social security contributions. So, I mean, so therefore, this is a level of security or social securities. Uh, sorry. This is a level of tax, so level of contributions. And uh, this uh, vertical axis means the government social security expenditure. So therefore, this is a service level. So vertical axis means a service level, and the horizontal axis means a tax burden level. So in order to be sustainable and, uh, for the future, of this system, then we should, oh, okay, so both uh, tax burden and the service level should be balanced, okay? And this area, blue area, is uh, this balanced area, okay? France or Finland, Denmark, Belgium, Belgium, Austria, Italy, this is a high point, so the high service level, but high tax. Burden. So therefore, this is balanced, no problem. On the other hand, in uh, Korea or uh, this Ireland or here, US, this area is a low service level and a low tax burden. So therefore, sustainable. And in Japan, 1955, 1980, 1999, just in this, uh, in blue area, and we evaluate that uh, this is sustainable. But now, 2015, Japan is located here. And this is a sustainable area called blue area. Blue area is a sustainable, but now uh, Japan is not located in a sustainable area. If Japan, Japan is going to the direction this way, to upward, and if Japanese policy uh, does not change and uh, continue to this direction, 2016, so Japan will be located here and big difference from the balanced area. And uh, this, is, uh, this area is not sustainable. So without reform, only government social security expenditure will increase because Social security expenditure or service level increases every year because so the elderly people increases. Also, medical technology is developed more and uh, high cost. This is good uh, from the viewpoint of service, but this means uh, the cost also increases. On the other hand, in Japan, tax is not increased. Of course, as you know, in, in, in Japan, consumption tax gradually increases in 10 years from 5% to 10%. But uh, this increase of the consumption tax has not enough to cover the increase of social security costs. Social security cost is very huge, but the tax increase is very small. So therefore, uh, this uh, is not sustainable. So what we have to consider in Japan is how to uh, recover this situation toward the sustainable area. So Japan should go to sustainable area. So we should uh, set so two policies. So first is decrease the expenditure level. And the second, increase the tax level, okay? But uh, decreasing the service level is very, very difficult. And on the other hand, uh, increase the tax level this way is a long way and uh, it's also very difficult. So therefore, I think it's the best choice uh, to take middle 
decrease of service level and the middle increase of tax level. So therefore, this way is uh, maybe a best scenario and a easy scenario to achieve, I think. And this is the last slide, okay? Shift to social security that accommodates the needs of all generations, okay? Now, uh, before the reform, so one elderly people is uh, covered by two working uh, people. But uh, in the after the reform, expand the coverage of consumption tax revenue usage by newly installing child care policies. So all uh, needs people are supported by all uh, people, including the elderly people, which means that elderly people should work if elderly people is healthy, not bad healthy conditions. So even if the after 65 or 70 years old, so some elderly people are not health problem, and it's possible for elderly people to work. And by working, so elderly people will pay the tax. So therefore, now elderly people is not supporter, but after the reform, elderly people will be supporter. To we we can support for another elderly people. And also elderly people will support the child. Okay, now after that, so family will uh, has have an incentive to have more kids. This is a very desirable future uh, situations, I think. Oof. That's all, thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Professor Akai, for your insightful about presentation about Japan fiscal system. Actually, we, we want to learn about the practice in Japan because in Indonesia, we also face some uh, problem that may be applicable that Japan has dealt before and in Indonesia in time of learning. So we want to learn uh, in Japan practice and what is the problem and how you tackle with that issues. Thank you very much for the insightful. So now we enter the question and answer question. Uh, first, I would like to invite, there is two, two uh, questions. So I will ask uh, Eliza to ask the question to Professor Akai. Mm -hmm. So, Elisa, could you please ask your question to Professor Akai? Uh, well, well, could you, thank you, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> please explain the question so far. Which one? It's a chat no? The Which first one? one, so the question is, why does Japan have no inflation at all, even as its burden de budget deficits accumulates every year, and the balance of government debt tops 200% of the nation GDP. So the question is about, so you can see the <laughs> budget deficit is accumulated every year. So have you calculated the inflation? Or in Japan, if there, is there any inflation in Japan? No, so maybe the no, no deflation. So interest rate is very low, and uh, no, uh, this is a deflation situation. Ah, so this so deflation it, it means uh, decrease of the some consumer price, and uh, this is good for when I consume something. But uh, this means just uh, salary level. This how can I say? This salary is also decreasing. The so all price is decreasing. So therefore, this is not good for the in terms of the economic situations. So economy is shrinking. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, so therefore, just uh, it's a different spiral. Have you heard that this is a different spiral? It's a uh, okay, consumption price is decreasing. Then the shopping or uh, some uh, farm. It's very difficult to make a profit, okay? Because the price is increasing, our price is decreasing. And results, 
as a result, the salary for the firm or salary for the corporation is also decreasing. If salary decreases, then the demand for consume, consumption decreases. So therefore, it's a kind of deflation spiral, decreasing the price, decreasing salary, decreasing the demand, decreasing the price. <laughs> so this means the economy is shrinking. So GDP is shrinking. And this mm -hmm. is the Japanese situation. Well, it's so, not good. Yeah. No yeah. high, no growth. So almost uh, 0%. 0%. Uh, but uh, Indonesia is high economic growth now. Yeah, currently. How, how, about, how about the rate of the inflation in, in Indonesia? Italy is 5%. 5% ev every year? Yeah. So for Before. example, the price of McDonald's, McDonald's, the- yeah. 10 years is cost like uh, uh but are uh, increasing uh, yeah it's increasing, increasing it's almost uh, times 10 years ago <laughs> compared okay, with but uh, okay so maybe it's easy to imagine for this example so in the mac the price in the mcdonald mcdonald mm -hmm. in japan it's almost the same for 10 years or something so the price of big mac is same mm -hmm. for example we always uh, take Big Mac to measure. Yeah, big, big Mac is the same. So therefore, it's very nice because the Big Mac price is the uh, same. But the salary is also the same. And the salary uh -huh. is decreasing or salary is the same. So therefore, mm, this is not, not, not good. <laughs> <laughs> Just maybe yeah. the good situation is that uh, a little uh, inflations. Yeah. Uh, maybe one or two or three percent. So now Japanese government uh, target. No, so as you know, the inflation target. So Japanese government try to uh, achieve the two percent inflation every year. But but uh, not successful now. Not achieved yeah. yet. Last year, Abe is successful to achieve inflation for the first time. Is it true, mm -hmm. Professor Akai? In the last period of Abe regime, so Japanese can achieve inflation for the first time because before it's deflation. Is mm. it true? I heard a rumor like that. No, no, in, in Japan, so inflation rate is about uh, 0% or zero percent. Yeah, sometimes it's a minus deflation. Mm. So, okay, next yeah. question. So next question, I think this question from Petria Angraini. So I will read. So okay. good afternoon, Professor Akai. This is some local governments in Japan has issued okay. municipal bond as a mm -hmm. finance for infrastructure. How is the relationship of public finance management between central and local governments? Is the local government needs approval from legislative and central government when the local government will issue municipal? Okay. Uh, the situation uh, for the local, gov uh, local government bond is a little bit different from the central government bond. And, uh, okay, I'll, I'll show. Okay, this is the This is uh, here of the government bonds for central government. And as I explained, central government has uh, two parts, the construction bonds and the special deficit financing bond. On the other hand, so local government, the special deficit financing bond is prohibited. So therefore the local government can issue only construction bonds because the local government is very, very small size. So, so if local government can freely issue the special deficit bonds, then so some uh, local governments will face a uh, big deficit. And uh, this is a big problem uh, in terms of sustainability of local uh, government. So of course, uh, for the central government, sustainability is very, very important, but the central government is a big size. So therefore can uh, be sustainable 
uh, even if the central government has a big uh, bonds. And uh, the central government can issue the construction bonds only. And uh, but central, uh, but local government is, is still small. So therefore, this construction bonds is uh, issued under the control of uh, central government. And uh, in order to issue the local government bonds, so construction bonds, then the local government uh, has to get the permission from the central government. This is a situation in Japan. And, uh, but the local uh, government has not big uh, 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 government bonds outstanding because uh, the local government is, uh, uh, okay, the, of course, the, exp the difference between expenditure and the revenue uh, exists in the local government level. But uh, this difference between uh, expenditure and revenue is uh, supported by the central government transfer. So therefore, the uh, local government has not so big uh, mm, bonds, uh, big, uh, no, big deficit. Yeah, that's all. And how about the central, the is central government give a guarantee as mitigation risk if the local government is default sensei? So if local government like uh, default, so is the central government give a guarantee? Yeah, or yeah, yeah. But uh, the central government regulates all local governments uh, and uh, check every year. Uh, lo local government uh, deficit. So therefore, uh, local governments, how, how can I say? So before the stage of local government default, default situation, the central government uh, regulates all expenditure, all taxes. So therefore, there is no default stage in Japan. So before uh, entering the default stage, so the central government regulates all expenditure. Of course, there is central government will support some transfer. Hmm. Uh, so it's a little bit different from, for example, in the US. In the US, there is a law of default. So therefore, mm -hmm. central government has no additional subsidy at the stage of default. So therefore, some local governments will default actually. But in Japan, there is no such a case of default. So in the Hokkaido area, there is a small city and a big deficit. But there, but this deficit uh, finally uh, did not default because the central government will uh, set the transfer and regulate all uh, expenditure in this small city. It's a, it's a different. Sorry, <laughs> it's difficult to explain. So okay, any questions? To the next question from Rifki Ramadan. So first question is, is the Japanese government uh, planning social security expenditure cap, cap or privatization, privatization? Should the burden of the sector worsen? So social security expenditure or privatization should be a burden of the sector uh, so the question, I think is hard to understand. <laughs> this this question is only for Tenku, but uh, I can, uh, I can uh, for, for you, Professor. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. So from Rifki, so number one is the social security expenditure or privatization. Uh, Currently, I would like to invite Rifki to clarify the question. Please, uh, Rifki. Thank you, Dr. Halil. Uh, well, I was asking whether the Japanese government is currently thinking about uh, social security cap or social security privatization so that the burden of the social security relative towards the government expenditure is not that burdensome. Is that a proposal currently being proposed 
or currently being discussed by the Japanese government? That's for my first question. Thank you. Mm. The social security system is very, very uh, complicated in Japan. And also there are big discussions about uh, how to reform the social security system. And uh, so of course, Ministry of Finance, Minister of Finance will decide so how to expand and uh, what level of expenditure it should be set for social security. And the social security cost is increasing every year. So the Minister of Finance uh, discusses every year about the cap level. For example, the, the point to be doctor, if doctor takes uh, some surgery, uh, and then the doctor gets uh, some points. And this means that this points uh, changes to the salary of the doctor. And uh, so this point uh, should be decreased or some medicine point. If you get uh, some medicine from the doctor, this is a point and uh, this uh, means a cost. So therefore, so medicine points should be decreased by the proposed uh, by the Ministry of Finance. So there is a big uh, discussion every year. But as a result, so aging uh, the people of a, uh, the elderly, elderly people is increasing. So therefore, it's very, very difficult to stop the increasing of the social security costs. Okay, so question number two. Uh, do you think that there is a reversal from the reforms like in 2003 treaty reform in ensuring much more resources, maybe for example, taxes, go to the central governments? I'm sorry, this, this is, what's that? Reforms like 2003 treaty reform. Three, two, two, two thousand. Reform by Prime Minister Koizumi. Oh. Minister Koizumi. Oh, three twenty. Oh, okay. Some mid tai kai kaka. The question is the evaluation of three twenty three. Uh, resource like uh, tax that can be actually can be collected by the local government, but mm. in the end go to the uh, central government. So, mm. do you think the reform like the need reform allows like that happen? Yeah. Mm. It's very difficult to explain in English, but uh, this reform uh, is very famous and the uh, tax uh, reform and the expenditure reform and uh, also subsidy reform. And after this reform, uh, the tax level increases in a local level and uh, also expenditure is cut and also transfer is cut. And the totally in the macro level, it's the it's, uh, same because uh, subsidy cut and uh, tax increases is the same for total in the macro level. But in the micro level, maybe some uh, small uh, area mm -hmm. has a negative impact and some big city is a large impact. So therefore, if we focus on the micro level, in the municipality level, then there are many different uh, evaluations exist. That's all, it's okay? Yeah. So yeah but, uh, very, very difficult to uh, uh, yeah, explain the evaluation. Yeah. I think we need to go to the third question. The final question is the Japanese government entertaining the idea of attracting more immigrants to be Japan permanent residents? Uh, permanent residents and subsequently citizens in easing the burden of the old populations. Because yeah, you know, the old population is increasing while the debt is also increasing. So how about the idea of Jap Japan government to attract more immigrants to be a Japan residents? Mm. Yeah, yeah, this is a good one. Well, I think one of the solutions. And uh, now the Japanese government is trying to increase gradually the number of immigrants. 
And uh, but uh, as, as you know, so Japan is uh, very one isolated uh, country and uh, one culture. So almost people are Japanese. Then and uh, it's a different situation from the U.S. or other English country uh, like uh, Australia. So therefore, if the immigrant is coming, it's sometimes difficult to live in Japanese society. Because if the immigrants cannot speak Japanese, it's sometimes difficult to stay because all sign or all materials, even in now, all materials, all sign are Japanese. Just if you go to travel to Kyoto or uh, some area, some resorts or some travel, maybe no problem. So some English signs. But if you live in Japan and if, if you work in Japan, of course, if you go to the hospital in Japan, if you cannot speak Japanese and cannot read Japan, Japanese, then very, very, very difficult. So therefore, uh, immigrants, it's easy to get uh, immigrants in, entering in Japan, but uh, for immigrants, so we, Japanese government should try to expand more, uh, not more expenditure to, for the immigrants to live in Japan easily. So mm -hmm. maybe changing the situation or environments, but it takes cost. And, yeah. But, but, uh, but one of the solutions to solve, maybe, maybe immigrants, uh, young people, and uh, we'll pay the tax. So this is a revenue side, it's very nice. But uh, for the expense size, it also takes cost. So it's a kind of balance. Yeah, and uh, this immigrant is good, but uh, immigrants will have a family and have a kids. And the kids has also the, some big, facing the, some big problem to go to the hospital, to go to the school. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's yeah Japan go to international, go international like using English, or the immigrant use have to use Japanese, <laughs> like yeah. I did when I go to Osaka for the first time. <laughs> yeah, thank you can speak Japanese, so there's no problem <laughs> to stay in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Not really well until I get native. Okay, next question from Iza Firdausi. So she appreciate the presentation and explanation about demographic gap, demographic and fiscal condition in Japan. And she wants to ask about the other resources of income that Japan has. Because there is a orders income in your presentation. So could you explain what is that? And are there any source of non-tax income that help ease Japan fiscal burden? Non-tax income. So what, what what's the image? I mean the orders income in your presentation. So you have uh, like in revenue, you have a Com uh, consumption tax or consumption other tax? And the other instruments, for example, uh, in Indonesia we have like a dividend from the corporation. Oh. Um, so the alternative of finance can be entered as a uh, revenue. Mm -hmm. So she wants to ask mm -hmm. you to give an example. There are, yeah, this is a one possibility to set another tax, but uh, this tax is a small portion, not big effect for the Japanese total revenue. Then it's very small share, I think. So for income tax, corporation tax, consumption tax, it's the main three big taxes. And another tax is, this is good for, uh, but uh, it's not big volume, I think. Mm. So could you give an example of- But, but in a local side, local yeah. side, local, for the local government, it's very, very important to levy the land or levy the some buildings or, um, Maybe the tax for the tourists, mm -hmm. the hotel tax. Or, mm -hmm. So in a local, for the local government side, the size is very small. The re revenue, total revenue is small. So therefore maybe other tax will contribute. 
to increase the revenue. And the second question from Isa. So what about the economic recovery plan in Japan to respond to the pandemic? Because this pandemic condition is very give a huge impact on the spending for the social security. Mm -hmm. I mean, so what is Jap Japan has a recovery, economic recovery plan to respond to the pandemic? In what's a legal, legal point? Le a recovery plan. For example, Indonesia, we have like uh, a recovery plan stipulated by law. For example, like giving uh, more tax credit and also oh. yeah, yeah. how about in Japan? Yes, Japan also, of course. Uh, there are many uh, special expenditure to the people who lose the job and uh, there's some expenditure for the restaurants uh the expenditure for the some some people who was damaged by the pandemic mm -hmm. so this is answer <laughs> is this the answer so I, I i'm not sure this is a legal plan I, I don't know so is there any policy action from japan for example indonesia we give uh money to the people for example oh, yeah it's like less than uh five thousand okay yeah. great in, in japan uh, yes there, there is a similar similar policy so all people this uh uh two man one hundred thousand yen one hundred thousand yen to for all people this is done in uh, july and august in July and August. So is that still continue? For example, is no, 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 just once time. One time. Uh, but it's not good, I think. And also now the famous uh, policy is a uh, go to travel. There are many okay interesting policy here in Japan. The go to travel and the go to eat, go to event, go to. Mm, go to shopping for local streets. There are many go to policy. And uh, okay, this is a very famous and interesting policy. If you go to this is a go to travel policy, and uh, if you have a reservation for by using the go to travel, maybe all travel expenditure will be half. So for fifty percent of total cost of travel will be subsidized by the government. This is a very nice. And if you use a policy of go to eat, if you <laughs> reserve the restaurant by using a go to eat system, then so 1,000 yen is subsidized by every, nani? every meal. So every dinner. And also the recovery. I hear that Japan wants to give a free vaccine for COVID for free. Is it true? Free free what? Free vaccine of ah, COVID. Free, free vaccine. 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 Uh, I'm, I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not decided yet. Oh not decided yet. Yes. Okay. But what's the situation for the COVID-19 in Indonesia? as uh, still or uh, not decided yet because the uh, the government wants to give a free vaccine also but mm -hmm. only for like uh, first uh, generation or maybe like a young generation first or for some some special group for example mm -hmm. like the nurse uh, medical mm -hmm. uh, medics and also from the for the teacher and and school Mm. That's a priority group. I think mm. we will continue until 2022. Mm. And also a next question from Asri. So how to make a country stay in at a sustained position 
on social security expenditure when the country is facing a crisis, for example, COVID-19. Mm -hmm. What do you mean is COVID-19? Could you, could you explain again? I cannot hear you. Uh, the question is how to make a country stays at a sustained position on social security expenditure when country. the country is facing a crisis, for example, mm -hmm. COVID-19. Oh. Maybe the question is about the sustainable debt policy mm -hmm. that on the last mm -hmm. slide you presented. Mm -hmm. So during the COVID-19, so the expenditure is, uh, the deficit is really high. Yes, so yes. how to make sure that our part is come back again to the <laughs> sustainable debt? I don't know, but uh, maybe increasing tax just only. Only yeah, only two. Yeah, only two. Mm. And since uh, uh, Professor Akai, so maybe this is the last questions from you, Dion. So besides the government intergovernmental transfers, so do subnational governments in Japan also use construction bonds to finance the SDG? Mm. SDGs. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry, Professor. It seems that uh, ah, Sir okay. Tengku, have you sorry. reconnected? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, Indonesia have many internet troubles, so different with Japan. <laughs> so yeah, the question is about the construction bonds can be used to finance SDG mm. team infrastructure. For example, sanitation or uh, education. Yes, yes. Yeah. You mean SDGs, sub, so, uh, Sustainable Development Goals, right? Yeah, yes, SDGs. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, of, of course, uh, in uh, all over the world, mm -hmm. SDGs is forecast. So therefore, some expenditure uh, is uh, fitted, uh, should be fitted for the SDGs policy. Mm. I think. I think we already answered all the question, Professor Akai. And also the time is pointing uh, at three Mr. now in Indonesia. So in Japan, maybe at five. So, um, yes, there is also one missed question in the chat. Yeah. In the chat? The, oh, okay. I, chat. I'll, uh, uh, I don't know. Is uh, it uh, the time? Are, is... We are to san. We are to yeah, san. We, we are to. Okay, good afternoon, Professor. Yeah, we are I, want, san, yeah. I want to know about the tax policy in Japan. How is the tax policy in Japan, especially regarding taxes imposed on individuals? As previously explained, the composition of age 60 and over in Japan is expected to increase, and this age is no longer the productive age. It is clear that uh, this age group has no potential to be tax levied. Is in the future that income tax is no longer a priority for state revenue? Or is there an adjustment in income tax rates for productive age? Or for workers from abroad, yeah, yeah, it's it's a general question. So, yeah, so elderly people is increasing, and at the present system, so elderly people is retired around uh, sixty years old. So therefore, after sixty years old, this is uh, no taxpayer, but the revenue is small. So therefore, we have. Okay, the Japanese government tried to change this system. So after 60 or after 65, if uh, this people is healthy, then uh, the government wants to wants for this elderly people to work more 
and uh, to pay more. And uh, this is uh, good for increasing the revenue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then after, maybe this is the last question, Professor. <laughs> regardless of the cult from Azwar, regardless of culture, I think this is interesting. What are the labor productivity traits, such as on time, hard work, and also working late? and can be governed by Japanese government policy. Mm -hmm. Is it effective? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, labor system, yeah. But in Japan, is the productivity is still low. So therefore, in order to increase the productivity, so especially in the labor people, yeah, it's very important, I think. Mm -hmm. I think we have finished all the questions. Thank you <laughs> very much, Professor. Akai, for your time and your presentation today. Yeah, thank you. So before we close the, this webinar, so we want to take a commemorative photo. So could you turn on all your video? I give you to uh, Andika to take over. Okay, uh, Mr. Gunawan, Mr. F uh, Furkon, Mr. Furkon, can you uh, turn on your camera maybe? I think because the setting was only for oh, certain oh, people. Uh, can uh, uh, wait a I second. I think the, the host has to change oh, the set. This host, Pari. Bisa tolong Pak Furkon dijadikan co-host? Or everyone can open the video, so... Uh, di, di set oh, semua yeah. bisa buka video, Pak Ari. Okay. <laughs> Saya mulai melambat di sini. So this is a really rare session that yeah. I have to hear presentation from Professor Akai. Hello, Professor Akai. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ready on three. We'll take your pictures. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank And you. That's it, Mr. Tanku. Thank you very much, Andika. So... I would say, again, I would like to say thanks for Professor Akai to come to our okay. university, even if virtually, and thanks to our Dean, Ibu Sri Mariati, and so, our... Okay, all, for all students, so after finishing the COVID-19, so please visit Japan. Yeah, we will love <laughs> country. And also, I have a chance, so I will visit uh, your university.